the common modalités de gouvernance Well, for me, it would be the maturity uh, of the movement compared to three years ago. Um, I think at that time, still a lot of people were thinking about the commons. And I think about the big majority of people who are here today, um, they just were doing uh, commons. So uh, I feel the level of maturity of the movement is really different. Well, a bit in the same, in the same vein. Um Three years ago, we had more discussions like what is the difference between water and knowledge. There's kind of um, insisting in the divisions between different communities. And now we had a kind of more coherent commons approach, uh, or um, I would even say um, that that idea that we all together fight the, si the same fight, which is defending the idea of non-exclusivity in all of the areas we are working in. Mm -hmm. And this is a kind of a unifying element of all those movements and communities and struggles out there. And it was pretty clear in the conference. Yeah, I was surprised uh, to encounter so many new frontiers of exploration where people were grappling with issues or had published law review articles on topics that were of interest to me that I had no idea was going on. And the number of side events in which they're trying to explore new solutions. You know, what is a credible pathway for dealing with, with climate change, for example? Someone had done a, a law review article on public commons partnerships and how municipalities could affect them. So there are all sorts of those kinds of examples which I found quite remarkable and shows how much I need, now need to learn. Uh, there's another thing that comes to my mind which is, um, you know, usually if you organize a conference you have that idea that quite a bit of discussion and, and, and networking is going on before the conference and it never works. It never works. And this time it did. Actually we had uh, real debates before the conference, for instance, in the neighbor stream about content, about political issues. So we started debating before the conference and we will continue debating after the conference. So the conference is just an element of a long way to go together. You know, from what people uh, told me, um, is what they actually what they missed and what they want to see is more like um, um, skills, a skill set for facilitating commoning, as it were. So you know, it's a group uh, skills to to work with groups that they feel they don't have enough of it uh, because the education is individualistic and. Uh, so I, that seems to be like um, a kind of comment I heard from many people that they want to improve their inter interpersonal is not the right word, but you know the, the really the group, not just between people, but actually uh, collective intelligence. How do you get more out of out of people? Because we have um, ideas of what we want, but not necessarily the skill, all the skills that we need to actually realize them. And so this is something that I've heard from different people that they want to do. I think it would be for me that idea that um, commons is not so much the presence of non-exclusivity, but the absence of exclusivity, which is a slight but important difference. And, and that all we are discussing about has usually to do with control. And so I think, how do we, how do we protect that idea of non-exclusivity in the commons? So how do we avoid 
control over resources, community, people, spaces, which are designed in such a way that they are exclusive. So this is kind of the main, the main struggle, defending and protecting the idea of non-exclusivity. I guess that's my main point. I, I, would, I have a comment related to Michelle's, which is, I think, the challenge is how to cultivate a commons identity in an ongoing way, which is related to how we talk and reach out and communicate it. I think there are many uh, such communities. They may not be self-aware. Uh, there's some that are self-aware but unable to scale or to grow. Uh, so I think that's a challenge of how to reach a more critical mass in, uh, in all sorts of different circumstances. I'm thinking there's a kind of infra social infrastructure that needs to develop more in terms of clearing house of ideas, uh, just a learning of similar endeavors in other countries or within your own country. I think that's one thing that might grow out of this uh, as, as commoners reach a critical mass and a critical awareness. And another idea related to this is that uh, sometimes if you're talking about building a movement, you know, that, is, that there's always some fear out there that there would some be, somebody take over that movement or conceptually or politically or with leadership, concrete leadership in it. And I think that for me at least the, the perhaps most appealing thing is the common that this is virtually impossible if you really mean commons. <laughs> Because you can only, the, 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 the commons approach is just a mirror of the diversity of realities out there. You can never kind of embrace it. It's not you, in the same, in the same um, blueprint or in the same model. It is not a one-fits-all thing. So it is just... It is important to have that kind of how do we self-identify as commoners, but even if out there kind of language is different, cultural context is different, it will be all, always different. And it's only important to find out those basic principles and those core identities uh, which grow from bottom up in which, each of the regions. Which, and the ways in which uh, that can be cradled or contained Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen enough of these bottom-up upswells which are like cultural paroxysms that can't be sustained because they don't have some of the elemental institutional structures or identities or focal points. You know, how does this persist? How do they protect that common in behavior as opposed to expressing it and then dissipating? Um, I think that that's where a lot of experimentation has to occur. Um. One thing also I want to add from conversations I had with uh, attendees is that um, uh, a lot of people are going back to their local environment with a very explicit desire to talk with partners, organizations, co-ops about the commons. So they mm -hmm. want to start talking to the outside about um, the interest of starting to think in that way and to see how their partners react to this kind of proposal. Um, so I think this is one of the outcomes that we will see. Another mm -hmm. outcome related to that is just to take it further. I think there's a confluence of different commons, potential commons partners. The co-op movement was mentioned in, uh, prominently as a potential uh, ally, parallel track, collaborator. I think there's many such streams that could either become commoners themselves or uh, work very closely with commoners. I, I think there's still a split for me between people who are more or less aware of political struggle on top of the constructive aspect of the commons. So, um, of course, I'm, I'm on the political side. I, I do believe that uh, you can't just have, you know, social processes without politics. 
uh, but I, I, I'm not sure that everybody agrees with that actually. So I don't know what you think, but I, I, I think it's still a debate within the movement. Uh, but certainly in terms of you know politics and policy, um, and again you know you mentioned the communication of public services, it's an extraordinarily um, detailed essay uh, by Tommaso Fattori in Italy about you know reconceiving uh, public policies. And uh, so there's certainly a, at least a group of, you know, I don't know, I would say, let's say one third of the conference who was coming out with a much more determined uh, idea of extending the commons politically uh, in terms of think tanks and research. And um, so, yeah, I think that is definitely a difference from the first time. Well, I guess I slightly disagree with the third. It's more than a third. For me, it's clearly more than a third. Um, um, I cannot conceive working, um, or I didn't see me working on the comments without uh, oh, taking into account power relationships. Actually, I see the comments as an approach challenging power relations. I mean, the keynote, which tried to really bring it to our attention um, in a field of knowledge comments, for instance, yeah, started with precisely that idea that controlling knowledge and controlling information is nothing else than deriving power from it. It's done to secure power. And um, so I, I like very much that idea of what and the, and the fear then derived from it, the fear to lose power. So I, I, I did like very much that question, what if the fear changed sides? And I think that a commons approach and putting more provisioning into the commons and defending the commons as self-organized uh, organized spaces, etc., is challenging power relationships. Just let me put the example of, of Wikispeed, the open source, um, the whole open source hardware issues are challenging the current way of production, hierarchical production. They are challenging the idea that we need huge investment, we need a lot of money to produce modern stuff. We don't. And just take this further. And it's a challenge to the way cars are constructed. It's nothing else. It's challenging business models. That is challenging power relations. So sometimes there is a kind of complaint that that in uh, the Commons debate we would this this also the global north south power relationships, the kind of historical burden of power relationships between north and south would not be taken into account. Perhaps for me it is that obvious, it is so obvious that talking about commons is talking about the question how can we make fear change aside because we challenge power relationships. Talking about the commons is challenging power. I, I, I totally agree with that and I think that what I'm excited about is there are now efforts, uh, as Stefano Rodata pointed out, mm to inscribe these power relationships within the nation state and its aging mm -hmm. uh, systems of, of control. Uh, put it into constitutional law. Find systems of law to enable and recognize commons as a legitimate form of power. I think another element of that, however, is how should we conceive power within a commons and make sure it's yeah. accountable and not regressive? Uh, I think there is a un addressed challenge there. Absolutely. Uh, we haven't theorized it as much. We haven't thought about it, uh, you know, how we make that a sustainable, humane system, accessible, and, and so on. So that's another power frontier. Having said that, the, the initial burden of the commons being a, itself a source of power against uh, neoliberalism mm -hmm. is well on its way. I think there are two different aspects uh, because I think uh, there's two different publics and two different needs and one is the need from people who are already engaged in the commons but who may feel relatively isolated in their environment 
uh, to spread the word to a more general public. I think this is uh, one one priority that I've, I've heard expressed by many different people is how do we spread the story to people who are still unfamiliar uh, with this way of thinking and doing. Uh, and then the next step for me is um, also expressed by people who are already active is how do we connect with other activists. And these are not the same thing. They're two different needs. And uh, one of the things that I heard in the second group is, uh, excuse me, in the first group is the organization of commons festivals. The, um, the need for you know, more playful approaches that can appeal uh, to a general public to, by having them experience that food can be produced uh, in a commons way and, and, you know, and wiki speed cars, but to actually uh, you know, physically allowing them to, to see those things because a lot of these things you can know about it you know, through the internet and through news. It's quite a different thing to actually uh, see a car that has been produced in a micro factory uh, in your own city. Uh, so th those two kind of priorities seem to me uh, were both present and expressed uh, by, by, by people. Um, we have done two conferences with uh, that very idea that we, we should bring together people, thinkers, doers, commoners from different communities, from many countries. We try to make sure that there will be participation from many different point of views, countries, cultural backgrounds. And this is tied to limits. Yeah, so we had uh, uh, limits of spaces, limits of participation, limits of budgets, etc., etc. So I would really love, and I think that it's related to letting the word fly out and um, the message go to a broader public. Is I, I would really need, I think there is a need and it's the right moment to call for a kind of more movement congress really open one where this kind of mm -hmm. ongoing exploration and debate and conceptual debates are going on at the same time so we including more and more and more people so I would really um, put my energy into that and after the conference uh, I, I, I agree there's this need to be far more expansionary I, I feel that we're we're like a flower that's about to burst open and spread a lot of different seeds. I think getting more people uh, who have been just ordinary citizens involved will invigorate the commons movement because they will bring their own ideas and in, in ways that none of us would have conceived of. And I think they'll also bring new confusion and, and tensions that will need to be worked out. So it'll be like a new stage on a, on a larger scale, but r far richer with potential than uh, we can see right now. Um, well, I, I would address myself to the younger people and um, it's a bit of a personal message more, you know, like... I'll do it. Okay, yeah, so find, find out what your passion is. Find out what you're good at and find out what people need. And out of that intersection of those three answers comes a commons activity. And start doing and thinking and constructing your life with others uh, outside of capital. Uh, you know, think about your autonomy your interdependence with other people, start thinking really differently about how you're going to create your life and the construction of value uh, with people in a commons in a commons way. To the commoners who were part of that conference, first of all, thank you. That was a gift that was energizing and that will seed further conversations um, in, in, in very many regions. So thank you. That is my first message. And the second one is um, I'm pretty sure that within that uh, movement um, uh, there are plenty of needs on one side, but there are also plenty of halves. So let's 
start matching the needs and the haves so that we can start doing what we really want to do with our own resources first. And we can go to get a quite a long way based on our own resources and this will help us get resources from outside to really support um, the growing potential of the commons. Well, I, I think I have messages for the existing commoners of uh, let's keep on keeping on because I think conferences like this have shown the immense joy and satisfaction of simply coming together. Mm. And let's invent some new cultural forms to celebrate that and expand it. Uh, and let's develop many different nodes, uh, not just here in Berlin, but uh, around the world, which have their own character and their own vitality. I guess the other message would be to the potential uh, commoners of tomorrow, slip the shackles of mainstream commercial culture. Find the local um, experiences that will nourish you as a commoner and hook up with this larger movement because it, it's, uh, I think, not only satisfying at a personal and social level, but perhaps our only salvation for dealing with the pathologies of, uh, of our modern uh, civilization. Uh, I think the other key issue and priority for the next years is sustainable livelihoods within the commons. So I think the first phase was about how can we contribute to the commons and a lot of us have been volunteering, a lot of us are precarious, a lot of us are still dependent on, on capital and labor to actually make a living and I think so the idea that how can we make a sustainable living and maintaining our contributions to the commons is going to be a key and so we have to start looking at what are the right forms and they're not going to be for-profit maximizing companies, they're going to be ethical uh, cooperatives, uh, you know, open company formats, uh, all kinds of, we have to find out what is the best way to combine contributing to the commons and, sus and sustaining ourselves, our friends, our networks, our families. Um, I think it's related to that power issue. I think that the the real power of the commons as a paradigm and a movement can only develop if at the very moment of a political challenge, as for instance currently, or well, for the last 20 years actually, it is the free trade agreements, um, sweeping and wading whatever area of activity, um, where all the enclosures of the commons come together. Um, and at that very moment really act as joint movements all together, farmers, uh, the digital commons, um, uh, those who fight for access for medicine, for fair education, etc. All this is always at stake whenever the principles of market fundamentalism fundamentalism get enshrined into a new agreement, a new contract, a new law on multilateral level. So if at that very moment we all act together and see that their fight is our fight, the fight of those who defend the internet is the fight of those who defend uh, seat sharing, etc. It's the same thing. It's the fight of those who defend the water is the same fight as the fight of those who try to um, defend the idea of fair access to, to medicine. If at that very moment we all act together, really commerce can challenge power. Uh, I'm reminded of the statement by Carolina Batero who said, I want to talk about the commons through the front door and not through the back door. And I think there are two things simultaneously that have to happen if we're going to talk about the commons through the front door. One, the various enclosures of the commons are going to have to reach such a stage as Soka was describing that uh, people will start to realize we're all being enclosed upon mm -hmm. and we all share a great deal. Simultaneously, 
the common self-awareness and uh, sophistication and self-enrichment will have to reach a stage that it will be able to mobilize effectively uh, more than it has. When those two occur, the intensification of enclosures and the enrichment of commons uh, self-awareness and, and action, when they intersect, we're going to have a rather profound cultural change. And I think we're heading towards that cultural rendezvous, you might say, when those two different uh, forces meet, I think. Thank <laughs> you.